David Walker joins us so we can find the local angle on the in-season tournament. And we rummage through the sicko satchel. It's been a while. We do it today, Locked on Hornets. You are Locked on Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cause we live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. As always, we're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. Game Download time. Game Time app, create an account, <laughs> and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, go to Game Time Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's David Walker caught off by the Game Time. You can follow him on Twitter at david b walker there's doug branson find him on his sub stack every hornets box score.com and you can listen to me on wfnz every weekday 12 to 3 p.m 92 7 fm or the wfnz app david we were discussing this yesterday actually a couple of days now we're trying to figure out what we can do to fix the hornets i asked doug uh-huh. and he said look i want to be clear walker asked me if i could fix them no, I can't. We brought you on so you could. <laughs> right. Do you have an answer on how we can fix the Hornets going forward? Ooh, just the easy ones, right, guys? Um, That's it. Yeah, That's what we're questions. <laughs> well, you know, the one thing I've been looking at lately, and I feel like Clifford is just on the verge of more or less throwing his hands up uh, and just turning them loose. Of course, this coincides with his main man, LaMelo Ball, going down for uh, a little while. So maybe once he comes back, we'll see them do that. But as constructed, he is just – he's just handcuffed. I mean, you guys talked about how frustrated he's been and how desperately he's pleading for any semblance of defense, rebounding, maybe a little more effort out there. Or, or no, no, you, we, we don't want to see effort, right, Walker? We don't, we don't want to – we don't want to – yeah, to say they're not trying out there. Physicality, um, yes, physicality. physicality. Words, physicality. Yeah. Let's get physical. There we go. Uh, Aren't these but, all buzzwords know. for my team's not good enough? Like I just don't have good players. <laughs> no, I don't no, have no, a ton no, of all stars no, on this no, team. No, look, don't, no, look, don't, don't change. No, the, that's not. Change that's not what's happening here. No, but it's listen. Physical. I mean, you mentioned it before the show, Doug, off air. Uh, look what the Indiana Pacers are doing. You know, they're constructed in a way to win games by just blowing people out or just going nuts from the three point line. And everybody on that team, the thing I love about that team, everyone has a green light. No one is is told that they may not shoot a three-pointer at any time or, or from wherever they are on the court. And I think Clifford's just on the verge of doing that because that's the only way I see this team being able to have success. They're not going to hold anyone under 100 points, maybe ever. And uh, they're just going to have to outscore them. And once they get Lamelo back, you know, they can be fun to watch. They're fun again sometimes, but but they're not going to stop anybody. Uh, I disagree. I don't think he's going to turn Uh, this team loose. I think that Steve Clifford is, to his own uh, personal and possibly health detriment, is a man of principle. Um, (laughs) He 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 knows what he believes, and and he and he is you know reticent to move off of that at all. He evolves like he understands where the NBA game is today versus where it was even back when he was with this franchise the first time, and you can see that evolution happening in some of the things he doesn't do. Uh, and and does that are different than when he was here the first time, but he you know has this idea of what he thinks wins in the playoffs, and regardless of the roster that he's given, he's going to try to get that roster to play that way, and that's where all this tension comes from. But honestly, I I just think he's going to do that until teams finally say enough, we don't want that anymore, and 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 don't call him up anymore. Here's a, a great line <laughs> from Pratt from the most recent practice. And I think this sort of tells you where <laughs> where Clifford's head is right now. This is from Sam Purley on Twitter, at Sam underscore Purley. Asked in general if there can be a tendency for players to not have the necessary physicality in order to avoid fouling, Clifford said, quote, there could be, but certainly not with our team because we're 28th in fouls. We foul all the time. The good teams <laughs> that don't foul are disciplined. <laughs> yeah. He said that that's a good theory. It's just not here. Okay. I hear you trying to create some excuses. Those excuses don't fly here. Do you think that Steve Clifford is watching the Pacers win one game in the end season tournament, shaking his head saying they're never going to do it in the playoffs. This just isn't going to work. They don't play enough defense. I mean, he's probably right. (laughs) 
<laughs> he but is. That doesn't that you know it doesn't take away from that scene in Indy last night. And look, I mean, Rick Carlisle was much the same way. I mean, really, I mean, he's changed to some of his standpoint on on you know his philosophies going into this season. I mean, he's turned those guys loose, and he's got a dynamic superstar. I think we can say it now, guys. Superstar point guard and, and Tyrese Halliburton out there, um, who made, I have to say, he made several winning plays last night as mm. they won that game. So, you know, uh, yeah, th- that's how. I, what else can he do, Doug? W- what are the other options? What options does he have? Um, with the current roster, I mean, to, to fix the team, to, to, to move forward and to keep some of his sanity. Well, he doesn't have any options because he's not right. the general manager. And, and and that's just something he's never been interested in. Unlike people that he's like super friends with in the NBA that have been coach and GM, um, for sure, Stan Van Gundy. I'm not sure if Thibodeau has ever held that title officially, officially, but he's certainly had his hands in that cookie jar more than Steve Clifford ever has. Steve Clifford has been there to advise, but never to consent on on things that happen in terms of roster construction. So that's never where his head's been. I saw some comment come across the way that said, you know, remove Steve Clifford from the head coaching position and make him general manager. And, you know, then go out and find a coach. But it's like, that's interesting, but he's just never been interested in that. It's not where he's just a coach's coach. Like he just loves, yeah. you know, doing doing the things that coaches do and not the things that general managers do. There is the one thing that he was interested in when it came to personnel decisions that we all know of. And it was advising Rich Cho to take Donovan Mitchell over Malik Monk. And Rich Cho yeah. said, no. I'm going with Malik. So right now, from what we know, Steve Clifford is one for one on advising what the GM should do during the NBA draft. And maybe we just see, let's just give him more volume. He's efficient. Let's just give him more volume, (laughs) shooting from the hip, and see what he can do to help this roster. Do we want to go sicko satchel next segment, or do we want to do in-season tournament? Doug, you're the producer. You tell me. Well, yeah, you guys stole my uh, Indiana local angle on the in-season tournament because I I think it's interesting – that you know i had this like vision in my head a disney movie version of the charlotte hornets where steve clifford after practice gathers everyone up and says all right we're going to watch this in season tournament play cuz it's kind of like play in tournament play and we'll see what it takes and you see this game against indiana and boston and indiana at the end of game into that game getting stops it's a tough defensive game it's played with a high intensity pelicans kings too uh, a little yeah. bit more scoring there, but lots of lots of intense play throughout that game. A different brand of basketball than your average regular season game. And I could see Steve Clifford going, see, see, that's where we have to get to. That's where we have to build here. And then someone raising their hand and go, yeah, but coach – Indiana's got the like one of the worst defenses in the NBA. They just yes. they just turned it on for one game. Can't we do that too? And Steve being like, oh, well, um, uh, 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 oh, but no, we got to get there. <laughs> yeah, t- turn it on in order to get there, right? And then turn it on again, and then keep turning it on. Uh, the the two rapid fire local angles for me, if we're going to do this here, one you want Lamelo Ball to have the Tyrese Halliburton moment because I think you you got a lot of eyeballs on him. They beat the Boston Celtics. That's a big old win. <laughs> And now it's because even David, who knows who Tyrese is, it's like, hey, Tyrese, we can say that now, right? Superstar. Yeah. LaMelo having that kind of moment. That would have been nice, too, on that kind of stage. The other thing is we've heard Terry Rozier talk about this a lot because he comes from the Celtics organization. He always says he wants playoff basketball for these guys because it's so different because it's so fun. Mm. Well, I wonder just how close to a playoff environment those one games are in the end season tournament single elimination it's not playoff basketball i'm not trying to get crazy but it's as close to playoff basketball at least in a oh, yeah. feel sort of way than the other regular season games is that a little appetizer for what these hornets can learn these young guys on the team can learn and then apply that on a bigger scale once they go forward, there, there could be something learned there an elimination style basketball. And if you can't get to the postseason, you can't do in season tournament anymore. But maybe maybe the, the worst teams really go for this thing even more so. And I wonder if they're going to be rewarded at the end where, oh, OK, we, we can look back on this in season tournament experience and apply it here. And so now you're not going in completely blind as to what it means to play elimination basketball. I just wonder if there's anything that we'll be able to see for these players to draw back on. 
I mean, I think so. Dude, I thought that was those were playoff games. I mean, as I was watching them last night, especially Indiana down the stretch there, it was a playoff atmosphere. Uh, two good host spots for those two. I mean, Sacramento, obviously, you know, is going to be going to be rowdy. But what I keep thinking back to is, you know, the a, a bulk of this roster, certainly LaMelo um, and the core. <laughs> I mean, they've been in a one game. They've been in an elim- elimination game setting, right? Yeah, I, I mean, guess it's true. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, yeah, I know, but like, and I they know, got crushed. No, you're right. No, you're no, you're right. And they yeah, have, and, they, and, right. and you know, not different coach, right, 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 different coach. But um, so you know, that experience is, is not going to help them because it was a disaster. Uh, I, I do still think it helps, but they need to get another taste. They need to get back in an area and do something that at least replicates that playoff setting. Like, I don't know that this is going to make the uh, Pacers a threat in the actual NBA playoffs, but you know, just like the U- team USA stuff helps guys like Halliburton. Yeah. I think all of this helps them as a young team trying to do something else, take a next step forward, whatever that may be. They need some experience, some taste of winning, right? You want to finish this out, Doug, or you want to go on? Do we finally get to the satchel? Well, listen, this whole narrative moment for Tyrese, look, uh, in-season tournament is not playoffs, but it is a no. narrative moment. It's it's on national TV. It's a confidence-building moment for whatever the story is that Tyrese is going to have. And it's why I've advocated for years now not to waste time with LaMelo Ball's prime. Get him into the playoffs, not the play-in, but the playoffs as soon as possible. He was part of those play-in mm-hmm. disasters. There's no doubt about that. But had there been a better roster around him at the time, you get a young LaMelo Ball on a national stage making big-time plays. I think that could have, you know, take injuries out of it, but that could have changed his trajectory already. And so I think that's the whole fallacy with what we've been doing as a, as a franchise this whole time, which was, oh, well, we don't want to invest too much until we're sure we're going to you know, be able to compete in a first-round series. No, get to the playoffs and let your best players learn how to win there first, even if you lose in your first-round series. It's ridiculous. All right, let's go to the sicko satchel coming up next <laughs> on the Locked on Hornets podcast. <laughs> It's been a while, but we go to the satchel. We have a couple of good questions. One about a potential trade target, the lack of physicality, what can happen there, and are we being too hard on Mark Williams? We'll get to all those questions in just a moment. But now before we mention FanDuel, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders. Even more than that, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. You can even tip off the NBA season if you want to get involved in the Charlotte Hornets. Maybe I got take a line the for over. you. When, I got a line for you. Miller comes back. Go ahead. You. Bring me the line. Bring me the line, Doug. Good Lord. All right. Hornets, Bulls <laughs> taking place tomorrow. What did you say, David? <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> Hornets. Talk to me. Plus five. Five point dog. Five point dog. Okay. Remember, they were down. What was it? Against the Nets? They were like eight and a half, something like that. And you would have won some money had you bet on the Charlotte Hornets. So if you want to do that. Feel free to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. More Locked On Hornets coming up next. All right. Thank you for everybody writing in some questions for a sicko satchel type segment. I don't think we asked for sicko satchel questions, but you, you delivered to. anyway because you guys are the greatest listeners in the world. Doug is the keeper of the sicko satchel. He is Gollum with his precious, his bag of questions of depraved Hornets fans thoughts because he himself is a depraved Hornets fan. Doug, what kind of questions do we have today? Yeah, we're, we're in a moment in time in, in Hornets history where you don't have to ask for sicko satchel questions. You're just walking around. You can tell that people are sick. You don't need to ask. They're vomiting in the hallways at this point. Uh-oh. And the first vomiter we've got is T Ninder 23, who writes in bit of a sicko scenario. But do you think the Hornets should make a trade offer for yes. Pat Beverly? Absolute head case, but would bring <laughs> some much needed intensity to the locker room and wouldn't be a massive risk as he wouldn't command a large package to trade for. What do you think about the idea of Pat Beverly and, and the idea of bringing a head case to Charlotte? 
Yeah, I mean, he, so he's with Philly right now. I don't know if Philly would be wanting to get rid of him because it feels like these guys, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it feels like the Pat Bevs of the world, the older, maybe a P.J. Tucker makes sense in this scenario too, the, the defensive players where there is a huge personality Mm-hmm. feels like those guys are needed more so on the legitimate contenders to go do some of the nasty work than it does for the Charlotte Hornets, who will, I don't know if Pat Beverly makes a huge difference in getting to the play in. Maybe he does set the culture right, which matters. But also, I would like to have a culture setter if we wanted to use the coaching buzzword, which annoys me every now and then. I would like to have that guy on the team, a part of the foundation for years to come not a 35 year old that might come over here for a year wants to contend with the team going for a championship or Eastern conference finals appearance anyway. So yeah, it's not a bad thought. Like, yeah, I think he would help, but I think because of the lack of longevity that he would bring, I think the guy, those types of guys help contenders more. So anyway, I don't know if I'm, you know, yeah. you know, beating down the door to go get Pat Beverly, but it's not a bad yeah, thing. Yeah. I, that's so odd though. I had the same exact thought and maybe it was just out of your conversation that you guys were having and Clifford was just begging for some intensity, somebody to, you know, they, they've never had the, the vocal leader, especially not on defense. And Pat Beverly is kind of the, you know, the, uh, the, the flag bearer for that type of player right now in the NBA. But look, I mean, uh, Dylan Brooks was a name that was floated around at the end of last season, right? As somebody who would really like spark a locker room, and certainly bring an energy um and after the summer he had i think uh Mm -hmm. maybe it it turned out a little better uh perception wise for him but the hornets have to shift they have to change at some point and maybe it starts with that guy maybe it starts with bringing in you know uh somebody that's 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 older or or not quite as proven but you look at all these teams last night you know indiana wasn't constructed and stayed put um the pelicans made a big trade for cj mccollum uh the kings made a trade for sabonis oddly enough swapping tyrese halliburton but like all of these teams have made some moves somewhere and you know that's what doug was saying in the first segment the hornets just have not taken to uh trades or free agency to try and put different combinations around lamella ball it's been built out of the same core they've stayed with it for several years at some point, they've got to be able to take a risk. And, yeah, at this point, I'm not turning down much of anybody, to be honest with you, if they can bring something that's a change, something that's would be a positive uh, more so than a negative. I mean, he's going to do some stuff that is going to be head-scratching, but he's also going to change the team up and say, all right, who wants to fight? Who wants to be out there? And, like, you're right. It wouldn't be a long-term solution, Walker, but they need something to shock the water out there. And, 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 you know, if that was on the table, they should be looking at it. I don't, to your point, I don't, I don't think Philly's, you know, making that move right now, but something interesting would be, would be fun to look at. And he did spend one year with Minnesota and he was pounding mm-hmm. his chest on the scores table when they I mean, got to the playoffs. Now, uh, even Minnesota then was different than what the Hornets <laughs> are now, but Hey, he, he helped him out. So, yep. you know, then we got the great meme and the GIF of him, you know, celebrating with something yes. that we viewed as a minor accomplishment, which would, you know, I don't know if Hornets fans. Can talk. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Hornets are not one move away. Let's just be clear about no. that. It's not they're not a Pat Beverly away. They're not an anything away. They're either they're either going to figure this out as a team with the players that they currently have. I mean, they could add something, but they, but they could add Pat Beverly. But if if you know Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, uh, all the way down to Bryce McGowan's, if these guys don't figure out how to get that extra something, uh, Mark Williams for sure, uh, then the season is over. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. It's less about whether LaMelo Ball is out of a walking boot or not at this point and more about can they find the intestinal fortitude to go up against your, you know, more physical teams like the Knicks and Wolves and come out of it, you know, a little bit more competitive on the defensive end of the floor. So that's out of the way. But I am definitely, as the crazy person on this show, an advocate that every team needs a little crazy. And the Mm -hmm. Hornets over the past couple of years – keep getting rid of their crazy they brought in Montrez Harrell via trade and he acted in that sort of Pat Beverly role you sub him in and he just goes nuts out there and nuts in the locker room too 
and they got rid of him. And then Kelly Oubre, that's your that's your latest head case yep. that they ship out. So they've got to figure out a way to bring it in and keep it. You got to keep your head cases around for a couple of years and and let them get crazy and let them give give that team a little extra something. I'll always advocate for that. I mean, I mean, here's the thing though, like from the local angle, I, you you get it, I guess, like for a long time and, and given the roster stuff that's gone on with the Hornets, I'm sure there's some hesitation of bringing in a total wild card, right? But how long do you go on with solid core guys that just can't win? Well, and they need, but they need guard play. I mean, why did why didn't they keep uh, Reggie Jackson? Like I look back at that, he was part of the trade that sent Mason Plumley to the Clippers, and they yeah. just waived him. I mean, it would be nice to have a Reggie Jackson who's doing decent things with Denver right now. Like it'd be nice to have him floating around. Just think they're yeah. they're a little too willy nilly with shipping players out without some consideration of like. Do we have enough talent? It, because all of that would be different if this team weren't constantly screaming, we want to make the playoffs, okay? But teams that right. want to make the playoffs don't let the Reggie Jacksons of the world just float away. Wait, hold on, though. That is an incredible <laughs> isolated sentence. The The playoff teams don't just let Reggie Jackson you know, the ones that win. want to be right. The ones that want to be Reggie playoff Jackson. teams. Okay. Denver, a, a okay. championship Denver team obviously saw value they in Reggie him. Jackson, I mean, plenty, and he's playing he's well. Had he's had plenty of stops. He's had plenty of stops. One of them honest. could have been Charlotte, and it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, I guess we did have Kelly Oubre and they didn't, but, you know, it's so, like, I hear you. I hear you, you know, but I, I hear you with some of the crazy. I do like it. I like, and by the way, just, you know, these guys aren't enough of a head case to be a problem off the court. I mean, I don't, this no. Kelly Oubre story is weird. I don't know if it's, a you know, a huge problem. Pat Bev has never, I don't know if there's ever been a problem with yeah, him off the court yeah. of the NBA, but I hear yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Reggie wanna... Jackson scoring 14 on 50 40 right now. So, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, how many? Uh, let's, <laughs> let, what's the volume on that? What's how many games? 21 games played fit and 51% from the field, 41% from three, 13.6 points, four and a half assists, two and a half rebounds, and hey nearly man. a steal a game. Hey, man, Reggie Jackson. I, I like it. No, that it's, it's an incredible isolated sentence, in my opinion, but he is playing well for Denver right now. So, I'm with you. You know, they, they picked him up. And we would have loved to have him. You're right. I just, hey, I will. I will shut up yeah. about my Reggie Jackson. <laughs> All right. that, what he's doing. That's impressive. All right, let's move on. Let's go to some more sick of satchel questions. Coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Tougher than a one-eared alley cat. We'll get to a couple more sicko satchel questions. Also discuss Brandon Miller being up for a rookie of the month award. We'll get to that in the last segment here. In just a moment. This episode is brought to you by game time. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat when you use game time before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. So Game Time has the deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater even more than that take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nba for twenty dollars off your first purchase again that is game time just download the app you can create an account use code locked on nba for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply spell out l-o-c-k-o l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-b-a so that's how it's spelled <laughs> out locked on nba download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed more locked on hornets ahead I love what we stumbled upon <clears throat> in the last segment that I, I don't know how many people would have remembered that, Doug, that they, they did. Basically, they had Reggie Jackson as just to fill in for a trade. And, yeah. you know, Reggie, just to put this in perspective, OK, Reggie played 16 games for Denver in 2022, 2023. And there's like, ah, we don't need him. And now he's played 21. He started 13. Uh -huh. and averaging 14 points and done the numbers that you just went through. Yeah, Reggie, you're right. You know, teams that want to make the playoffs, they don't just miss out on Reggie Jackson. I did. That's something that is legitimately true, and I learned that today. Great Thank sicko you. satchel question that led us you're there. You're welcome. What's the next sicko satchel question that we have? Uh, this one comes from Edward. <laughs> this is kind of, 
I think a little bit in line with what we're talking about. This one comes from Edward484, who writes in, One solution is these days, especially if you expect diving on the floor and physical play, is having a much deeper rotation. Need a 10-man rotation. Either play the bench now or play them when your starters get injured. Coach them up better, too. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Guess Edward, not really a question Edward, there, yeah. No, there's not a question. <laughs> Edward, But Edward is so sick that he's watched this team, in particular the bench play of this team. He's so sick that he watches that and goes, I would like more, please. I would Give like you to more. go deeper into mm-hmm. the G-leaguers and play them more, please. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I think Nick Smith Jr. just got his first Greensboro assignment. If I'm not I mistaken, told you. PR just I told put, you. Yeah. It's not. It's not a reflection of his. Well, that's just minutes, though. I mean, the yeah, that's what I'm saying. Playing, it's not right? a reflection of his talent. It's just it was inevitable, and he will be bouncing <laughs> back and forth between Charlotte and Greensboro. And then if all things go well next season, I expect him to be fully with this roster. Did you just pound your chest on a told you that the second round rookie or the late first round rookie went to Greensboro for a minute? Like, did you yes. I mean, you. listen, I've pounded my chest over <laughs> way okay. less than that. Okay. <laughs> I just got done pounding my chest over Reggie Jackson. You did. You did. You did. No, but that one was deserved. Honestly, I bow down to you in that with the Knicks. My Smith chest Jr. is bruised from how much yes, I pounded it. It is. All right. What's the ne- final sicko satchel question for us today? Do you though? have any thoughts? Do you have any thoughts on Edward wanting to go deeper into the bench at this He's point? I mean, sick. is that? He's truly yeah. sick. No, I think, yes, it would be nice to have better players so we could have a deeper rotation, but I don't think that's going to lead to winning more basketball games. I would like just the players there to show enough physicality. I don't know if bringing in a, you know, whoever off of the bench, like 14th, 15th guy, I don't know if that, but I guess the idea is that fresh bodies, they're going to have more energy. They're going to make the play for the basketball that's on the floor more so. I mean, I, I get it. I just, I, get I also it. think they, there's a lot of the half court stuff that's going to hurt them once, you know, the, the loose balls aren't out there. And now, oh, wait, we have to play basketball now. And it probably will hurt them with those guys. Yeah. Not so much the loose balls I'm worried about. It's the balls going in the basket that I'm, I'm well, worried yeah. about with anybody deeper. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. So I think people watch Nick Smith Jr jump onto the floor and look like a little Tasmanian devil out there running around and grabbing loose balls. And they say, yes, that's exactly what the Hornets need. They should play him more. When Steve Clifford would say, I would like the players that I know will play well consistently also do that. Like Mm -hmm. the guys that can make buckets consistently, the guys that can't, that I know can physically match up defensively with yeah, the players that they're going to face, I would like and make NBA level passes. I would like those players to play like Nick Smith Jr. And then, you know, two, three years down the line, then you go to Nick Smith Jr. when he's ready. All right. I like it. He's just got to come back back from Greensboro and then he'll be ready to do it. All right. What else? Uh, la- last one here, Doug. What's the last one? Uh, this one's just for me because I just want to know if we're being too hard on Mark Williams. No one wrote this in. No one said this, but I just think we should do some self-evaluation because we, we did critique him pretty hard. And and David, you, you I know you listen to the show uh, and, it, and it hasn't just been one. last show. So I wanted while David was here to ask you, like, are, do you think we're being a little too hard on Mark Williams? Yes, you are being too hard on, on Mark Williams. <laughs> uh, you specifically, yes. <laughs> we know where Walker stands in the Mark Williams camp. I mean, I'm. I think I'm yeah, like there it. with him. Uh, you got to give Mark a little bit of time, man. I mean, look, he's learning. He didn't learn anything at Duke. Obviously, there's no post moves or defensive maneuvers he learned uh, on, under that tutelage. So he's got to be. He's getting the first good coaching of his career. Uh, he's got to get a little bit stronger. We knew that coming in. Like we knew he had to get stronger. Uh, he was feeling good about that in the preseason, so he needs another, probably another offseason there. But, you know, he's feeling his way. He's going to struggle against bigger, stronger, and unfortunately, uh, more aggressive guys right now. But I think that the, you're looking – but the numbers, some of the numbers just don't lie. Like some of the metrics he's putting out, some of the things he's doing on the court um, offensively and even rebounding, not enough consistency on the rebounding piece of it. But, look, he's brought a presence that they just haven't had there in a long, long time. So I'm more – excited for his continued growth and I'm allowing him a little bit of the, you know, the slip ups, even though when it's, when it's bad, it, it, it is kind of painful to watch. No, I'm, I'm with you. And so like, yes, I think I probably didn't agree with Doug as much at the beginning 
I I do think that there it hasn't been consistent he, even late. Even last year, I think he was showing more consistency. I like it feels weird. It's like do my eyes betray me? It, is he is there are some regressions yes. in sometimes, but yeah, like that's that you're saying they do betray me or I'm right in saying that there's regression. Well, I don't I don't know that there's necessarily regression. There just hasn't been progression. Your That's, your eyes he, did betray you in that last season. We talked often about how he would go up against smaller teams or teams with bigs that weren't as aggressive and he would play super well. And then he would go up against teams that had you know similar uh, players to the Knicks and Wolves and he would struggle. He would shrink. And so this isn't nothing has changed. It's just not progressing and so you're either in two camps you're either in one camp is you know a little bit worried kind of the same camp that's worried about Bryce Young and it's going hey I'm seeing a lot of things here and I'm a little bit worried about that that is not going to change and then you're or you're in the other camp which is where Steve Clifford is and where people that have to defend him are and and saying look this is technically kind of his rookie season because he didn't play in the NBA a lot last season you have to give it time I'm just in the former camp right now and hoping to be in the latter camp at some point so does the progression so you need to yeah i guess for me there are some problems with mark williams this is it's all about framing with our players that we like don't mm -hmm. like you know where they are i don't because like you know the classic one for me is pj or like i don't ever think pj is going to be an all-star and so then when people say you know this guy what he's not yeah like i would never call him untouchable but i love what pj brings i love the idea of what mark williams could bring and i think we've seen that quite a bit we we saw it last year like i i don't know yeah i think we probably disagree a little bit here i do think that there were some times that he showed up like the heat i don't know if anybody would say the heat they're not a physical basketball team right yeah, but bam heat, bam doesn't want it bam soft okay well right this is your snooker this is your jalen clown i you've got you've got I'm it for saying. bam as well i don't know bam if anybody soft. would call him a soft basketball player i think the heat I would not yeah so and mark really showed up close. against that squad I mean, heat fans would I think Boston, he showed up. That was his best game by far this year. I thought he was sensational yeah. against the Boston Celtics. And so we see a lot of that. I think against the Hawks, even with some moments against Capella, I think, hell, I would take that Hawks game every single game of the year if I knew I was going to get that every single time, even with some so the of the problems that he had against Capella. I can't hear anything you're saying. I just, just the mic. It's better that it's better but, that way. It's yeah. better for you. So, it's better for the entire show. <laughs> so, so, but, <laughs> but I will say you are right when we've seen the last, I don't know, what is it like three weeks or so, even month. And I, I guess throughout the season. Yeah. There, he's out of position defensively. Sometimes um, he gets bodied. He gets pinned on some of these offensive uh, rebounds that the other team is getting. He's not getting the defensive rebounds. Um, there was a moment in transition where he just completely lost his guy. I think a lot of that will clean itself up as he gets older because yeah. the, the, playing the center position, so many people say how hard it is to come in and play good defense immediately. I actually think Mark was a better rookie defender at the center spot than a lot of rookie centers that come into the league. And so for me, I, I just thought that was going to continue to go up, and I've said it a million times. I took for granted that that was just going to continue to move on up as he got to a second season, and that hasn't happened. And so I was wrong about just expecting that and not expecting any growing pains at all the second year. I just want him to yeah. want it. I want intensity. I want aggressiveness. I mean, he's, you know, yeah. when you look at, like, technique and different things, like, he and Brandon Miller are making similar-ish rookie kinds of mistakes, but but when I look at Brandon, I can I can feel that he wants it. I can feel the attitude, and I and I think he's got you know that I look take, in his eye. He's got that look. See now, see you're paying attention, and I like it. He's got that look in his eye, and when you have that look in your eye, you know some other things have to fall into place. You've got to keep working, but when you got that look in your eye, that's that's what it takes. And right now, when I look into Mark Williams' eyes, I see marshmallows. Yeah, and I think I mean Doug, you mentioned the other day like there's tape on him now too. Like these guys know the formula; it's kind of bang against him and lean on him a little bit. But I think he moves; he still moves well enough for me. He still brings enough offensively and with his touch under the basket, even if that's maybe 
gone away a little bit uh, recently or, or been spotty here or there. But I've seen enough good things from him because, honestly, I think he overperformed for me uh, even in his shortened rookie year from where I thought he'd be coming out of Duke. I mean, he did spend a lot of time in Greensboro. And as you guys mentioned, dominated there as he should. Uh, but I do think this is a, an extended rookie year for him. And that may sound like a cop-out. It may sound like an excuse. But with very little help under there, too, uh, he's just taking on a lot of that. And he's finding himself out of position, maybe trying to do too much. But I think the upside is there with him. I think uh, people will still enjoy watching him. It would be awesome to see you know, him down there with a big bruiser that had his back. You know, See what that would look like if they can bring somebody in to kind of fill that void, maybe at the four or give him some minutes out there with somebody who can kind of take some of the lumps for him. But, yeah, yeah. I, I think Mark is the least – is one of the least of my worries with this roster uh, right now uh, moving forward. No, I don't want to. He doesn't need. He doesn't need a bruiser next to him. That's you know. That's just. No, he needs to be the bruiser. He doesn't need a bruiser. I don't want him to have a bruiser next to him. I want him to be the. This is we've done this. We did this with Rudy Gobert for years in Utah. Oh, well, you put this guy next to him, it'd be fine. No, it's like you, you need him to progress in that way, not to try to make up for the fact well, that he Gordon doesn't Hayward, have the things you know, that that a that a big time center should have. Gordo sees a lot of uh, young Rudy in, in in young Mark, so you know maybe there's some similarities and that growth can continue. Hmm? Yeah. No? So so the answer is yes. I think Doug is being too hard on Mark. Yes. You're making faces. <laughs> the answer Good is question. yes to that Good. question. All right, Good. that'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first <laughs> listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. Find Doug on his Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. David Walker on Twitter, David B. Walker. Me, WFNZ, 12 to 3 every weekday. We'll be back with you tomorrow to preview the next game. Who do they have next? It is Bulls. the ah, Bulls. Bulls. Yeah. Bulls. Plus Bulls. Five. All right. We'll preview the bowl games, uh, Bulls game. And uh, I guess we'll do that with Zach Levine, some per, per, uh, like some trade targets. <laughs> Alex oh. Russo. Yeah. Maybe some Zach Levine, like Bulls trade targets. We could do that as well. Have a great rest of your day.